Um, I suppose this idea that you can transform a former tea house in Kensington Garden, which is the size of a large uh, private house, but nevertheless it's on the domestic scale, and turn it into a, an international site for the presentation of not only visual art, but also architecture and design, with a very extensive, extensive education and public programs. Um, on the face of it, it's an unlikely uh, building to have presented the, some of the greatest art of our time, and also some of the greatest thinkers and writers, filmmakers, and so on. Um, and I think one of the things that is, I find so fascinating about it is that the scale, rather than being a great disadvantage, is in fact a great advantage because it makes you think and have to think very, very hard about not only how you can use a building, but how we can now use the surrounding park, which for many years we were unable to touch. Of course it grew, and uh, I started my life as an artist, and when you're an artist, one of the processes of making art is that you do something, you look at it, and you think, what do I need to change? So that, that uh, process of looking at the serpentine and saying, okay, well, how does this look to me? And then doing something and going backwards and forwards all the time to see how it could be improved and developed, expanded, um, was very much part of my thinking. And indeed, if after 25 years I wasn't stepping down, I would still be going through that process now. So if I was starting my time again, I have a whole list of things that I know need doing and I would love to do. But of course, that's my successor. And the next 25 years, the next 150 years, um, in a time where culture in this country has never been more fascination to the public. And we are, of course, a not-for-profit. We're a public institution, uh, now attracting up to 1.2 million people in any one year. I put the development of contemporary art in all its manifestations in this country down to the Freeze exhibition, which as you know, was organized by Damien Hirst and others uh, when they concluded their period of um, studying at Goldsmiths. And that exhibition, which I'm so glad I saw, was really a fist in the eye for all museum people, all collectors, everybody in the arts in this country, because what they did was something very, very radical, which was to completely uh, take their final show as an opportunity to present a real tour de force, not of their work, but also their work presented in an extraordinarily professional context. It was in um, a warehouse uh, site, but everything about it was at the highest level of presentation and also the work was incredibly good. And that raised the bar for everybody in the sector and also showed me that if you don't like the system, then you invent your own. And it was a very, very inspiring lesson and one that I, I absorbed very well. Yes, a revolution without bloodshed, really. Uh, and certainly a renaissance, and of course, n n we'd really been a bit in the doldrums since the 60s. Um, and also um, quite insular, uh, islanders, I think, really. And so the whole thing burst open. But it was also a virtuous circle because artists can't exist on their own, no matter how brilliant. The museum world had to come with them, the commercial galleries, the public and also the collectors. And what developed over the next 10 years was an extraordinary transformation in each single area, which made it incredibly exciting. I think one of the things that's always been notable about this country is whilst we have government funding, unlike the US, we, it's now very modest in its, um, it's severely reduced to perhaps the 80s. And the need to attract um, additional support for all institutions, meant that the connection between philanthropists, business, 
became much closer, whereas before it was much more at arm's length. 